Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. We have a special video today. We're going to George Each Team's transfer window. Maybe give a rating out of 10 uh, as well. So we go through each team's, their ins and outs. And uh, guys, I'll just ask your opinions, basically. And uh, you can pick out players that you think could be good. Um, pick out players that are losses, etc. It's up to yourselves. But uh, yeah, we'll start with Bohemians anyway. So transfers in for Bohemians. Ryan Burke has come in from Mansfield. Um. Yeah, Lawrence Dell's come in from your Union Berlin, of course, in loan. Josh Kerr from Airdrie. Declan McVay, Dundee. John McCracken has come in on loan from Norwich. John O'Sullivan from Accrington Stanley. Eaton Varian from Stoke. James Clark from Drotta the United. They're all the ins. The outs then. Sam Packham, Ryan Cassidy, JJ McKernan have all gone back. Uh, they're all in on loan. Stephen Mallon has gone to Clifton, uh, Cliftonville. James Finnerty, Galway, which is a loan. Grant Horton, end the loan. Dawson Devoy has gone to MK Dons and Promise has gone to Fleetwood. So obviously some of them stand out more than others. But uh, I'll start with JP first and uh, their ins. What's your general thoughts? Um, not great. Um, I thought that the first three or four they signed prior to the window um, was basically to come in and, and bulk a squad up a wee bit. Yeah. Um, Josh Kerr, I think, has the potential to be to be a good signing. He was here for six months, uh, a few years back, and I, I like the look of him. And unfortunately, he, he didn't come back. John O'Sullivan coming in from Accrington Stanley could provide them with that bit of experience that, that they that we thought yeah. they were lacking over the the first part of the season. Uh, look, I'll know about James Clark and, and what what he can provide for them, but I think that. I think Bowles would come out of this window weaker than they went done it because um, we know that they didn't have a, a, an out and out number nine for the entire season anyway. And and the one the one player that they were playing in that position uh, departed for, for Fleetwood. And yeah. obviously they lost their, their mainstay in midfield, Dawson the voice. So um, I don't think it's been a bad window for Bowles, but I think it could have been better. Luke, is there an argument? Obviously, Pavoy is the best player out of all those players, ins and outs. But is there an argument that maybe they've added a bit more depth to the squad, even though they've lost him? Yeah, yeah. It, it, like I, I, I can see why why people might think that. But as well, like they, they have lost a few other players as well. Like it's it's worth yeah. noting as well. You know what I mean? Like there's, you named a good list there of, of outs as well as well as ins, obviously. But how many of them are lost, though, so Luke? In your opinion, like I'll just quickly: Packham, Cassidy, McKern, and Mallon. Very injury prone. Finnerty, Horton, Dawson, Devoy, and Promise. How many of them do you think are really lost? Obviously, Dawson and Promise are losses. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think I, I liked what I seen from the start of Horton. Grant Horton sort of dropped off a little bit. Um, yeah. Malin is very, very injury prone. Um, yeah. You know, he's a skillful player. There's no doubt about it. Like we've seen what he done that night against Sean Grove that flick as well. Like you know what I mean? Like he, he does have. Potential to be a good player, it's just yeah. he, he's not so injury prone, you know. But you know, it's it's probably it's probably it's, it's, it's an interesting one, you know what I mean? It's a tough one, I think, as well. Look, obviously, you look at their ends and some of the players. Like I've been quite impressed with John O'Sullivan, Josh Kerr, and obviously I know James Clark very well. So, like mm. you know, I think James Clark would prove to be a really good player for them. Um, you know, and, and I think he's already taken to the fans already, which already. Um, which shows that like he's he's gonna be a good player for them. Um, so look, I don't know the rest of the the other the other ones they've signed. Not very convinced about it, to be honest. Um, you know, I I don't really think I think they're just sort of adding players. I don't really think there's any sort of basis behind it. You know that type of way. I think it's just they've just signed these lads. Um, and you know one or two of them are, like are just sort of nearly panic signings. You know that type of way. Um, but they felt like we've got to bring in players. Um. So some of them are better than others, but I I think the the ones that are worth knowing is probably James Clark and and John O'Sullivan and Josh Kerr. Like they, they they could be good signs for them. JP, who do you think is their best sign if you had to pick, or the one to watch? Let's say even. Um. The one to watch, I would say, is probably James Clark. Um, or maybe Josh Kerr because we don't know a lot about him. Um. Out of that, probably their best sign is probably going to be John O'Sullivan because he's coming back from England. I think he's. He's in his late twenties, early thirties. He's got yeah. bags of experience. He was he was playing for Accrington Stanley. Who are no slouches. They they really like they really do. Um, in League One every year, they they I think that they overachieve for for the 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 
size of the club that they are and, and the budget they would have compared to our team. So he, he's coming from a very good team. So um, I think for the best signing they've made, I think has to be John O'Sullivan. For the one to watch, I would say Josh Kerr because he's been in the league before, in my opinion, performed well, but we didn't see him back again to see his true potential. And um, as most people will, will know about James Clark anyway. Like. Give their window a ration out of 10. Right. Well, yes, as well as JP first. Uh, waiting out of 10, I'll give it a six. Luke? No. Give it a six, yeah. Give it a six. Six, yeah. <laughs> I think Kerr will be their most important signing because um, they badly needed a quality defender. I think it's been quite good so far. But we'll move on to Derry City. Ains, Ryan Graydon, uh, Sandy Diallo, Kean Kavanagh, Mark Connolly. And Declan Glass. So a couple of signings for Derry there. Out Jared Story, Brendan Barr, uh, Owen Toll, obviously is the big one, Evan McLaughlin, Jack Malone, and obviously Manny Smith technically is the big one as well, but Toll's obviously the big one. Uh, we'll start off with you, JP. Um, yeah, what do you make of the ins and outs? Um, I think we're probably one cl- one of the clubs that went under the window, come out of the window stronger than what, what we went under, definitely. Um, Obviously, we lost our, our key centre mm. half in Owen Toll, but I think that that was um, that that has been coming. Everybody knew that that was the worst kept secret in Ireland, never mind Derry. Um, but we replaced them very well with Mark Conley, somebody who knows the league, very strong, very experienced. Um, and the other players were just literally trying to get to know them. Ryan Graydon seems to start it well. He's got himself a goal in the derby. Um, he got a goal rolled out for offside in, in the cup game the other day too. Um and the other players, as I said, Saturday Diallo coming in from Forest Green Rovers who, who won the league league two title last year. Um, I know he didn't play a lot, but um, he comes with a, a good um a good basis from the Forest Green fans. They they were disappointed to see him go. Um, looking forward to the Watson deck on glass and Keen, see how him and Keane Cabinet develop. Um. The players that we lost, apart from Owen Hall, um, Matty Smith, who, who had been in the, the starting lineup, um, but he was probably going to lose his place anyway when with Michael Duffy back. So, um, it's the the rest are probably squad players that we've lost. Um, I know Evan McLaughlin was was seeking to move away anyway to to um, try and get game time. He, he came in scored in his debut last year against Waterford and. Um, and he's he's a he's a young player and he's very keen to, to continue his development and fair play to him. He's going to a good club and cool rain in the Irish League and um Brendan Barr was out alone last year at Ballymena this year, chosen Dungan and Swifts. Um so yeah, I think we've had a really I think we've had a good one though, um with the ins and outs and the players that we've lost that aren't key either, I don't think. Yeah, Luke, have they improved the squad overall, do you think, Derry? Apart from the yeah. fact that they obviously lost on total. Yeah, 100%. Like, and you, even if you look at Michael Duffy and that coming back now from injury and that, you know, like it's going to be like having a new sign because we haven't actually really seen him play properly for Derry this season. You know, he's been really unlucky with injuries. So, you know, um, I think that's that's going to be good for them bringing him back. But on the players they brought in, obviously, Mark Conley, I honestly think, obviously, look, you've lost on total, but hmm. Mark Conley is <laughs> in my opinion, the best centre half in the league this season. Um so mm. for him to then go into Derry after them losing Own Toll is it's just you're replacing him probably with a better player. Um and look Own Toll is a good player and he's a very good player and he's gonna go on to have a great career. But Mark Conley is at this point in time he's he's a he's got experience behind him. Um he's had, had some great games with Dundalk and um, been probably their best player. You know it's a great signing for Derry and uh, even Declan Glass obviously looks like he's gonna be a good player. Um, anyone else I'm missing there? Um, Ryan Graydon as well. Look, he's, you know, yeah, he's scored. Keane Cavanagh. I think Keane Cavanagh is going to be an interesting one. He, um, mm. I, I quite liked him when he did when he was with Waterford. Um, you know, when he was when they were in the in the Premier Division towards the end of the season, he he got a few goals and that. Do you know what I mean? Um, for them, so he he did have a decent half season. He potentially gives them something a little bit different because I think some of the players can be the same in attack, but he's a big fella. He's got a bit more ability, so he gives he's fast different. as well. He's fast, yeah, mm. strong. Very strong as well, um, mm. a good finish as well. So no, he's he's a good signing, um, mm. and then Ryan Graydon as well. We mentioned him, Diallo, 
Um, so, yeah, look, they, they, have, they have made some really good signings. And, yeah, I would agree with JP's statement that they've probably gotten stronger um, over the window. So that's a really good thing for Derry. And, and that's the sort of thing they probably need to do if they want to you know, keep building their squad up to, to get to where they want to be. Are we saying their best sign is probably Mark Connolly? Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Right now, 10, JP. <laughs> um, Not allowed to say 10. <laughs> <laughs> I would say eight, but mm. basically because I think we, we strengthened in the window and then uh, as we touched on, we've lost going through and looks absolutely right. We've re- probably replaced him with a with a better player and that's no disrespect to him because he was a fantastic player for us. Um, he got always gone to the motions a little bit as well. Like yeah. He was kind of thinking he was on the way out as well. So yeah. it was and for I, that. Yeah, and I think um, looks absolutely right. Conley's been the best centre half in the league this season, and, and we've managed to they, they replace a very good centre half with who's who's the boy was uh, the best in the, the league up to this point. So, um, yeah, I'm going to say it. And the one thing too about the Graydon and Cavana signings is there was apparently transfer fees involved. So, good that, that's good. That's good for the league as well. They could mm-hmm. other clubs are spending money within the league and providing the, the clubs with 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 money to be investing in their own as well. So uh, that can only be a good thing going forward, I think. So I'm going to say eight. Now, I'm going to give it a nine. Nine. Very good. Very good. He's gone for it. That could not be, that'll be hard to beat, I think. We'll move on to Trot of the United anyway. And uh, we've got Ian Lee Stacey, goalkeeper, Darren Noon, Stefan Stanage, Floody from Sydney as well. Some name. Uh, players out obviously Sean Rowan has gone back and Sam Long have gone back to Lincoln on loan uh, Killian Callis has gone to Cannes Mark Hughes retired and James Clark to Bohemians I'll start off with you Luke in this one yeah. have they improved their squad? Like I don't, it, it's a really tough one to be honest like I, obviously we I was a bit worried when we lost Sam I was, I was a bit more worried about losing Sam than Sean because like, yeah. I felt I felt like we could look and no disrespect to Sean. Sean is a top top player and he will go on to have a great career. He was very good for us, sort of the start of the season. Kind of dropped his performances towards them before he went back. Um, but Sam Long seriously was, I in my opinion, look my biased opinion, I thought he was the best goalkeeper up until up until he's gone up until he left like do you know what I mean and without him there was uh, in a few of them games like the likes of Sean McGraw was at home like it was, it was just unbelievable mm-hmm. and I was worried when we lost him to be honest because I didn't like I didn't think we'd be able to place him and you can't really replace him you know what I mean Um, with obviously the finances and all that with the club like you know what I mean we were never going to re- replace Sam Long but I have to give credit to Colin McCabe I think he stepped up Um, he has stepped up and he, he's done really well Um, so I can't really be, fault Colin McCabe at all he made some great saves as well yesterday so you know, for him to step up and you know he's got a few clean sheets as well, and I'm delighted for him. You know what I mean? And he's uh, he's done well, like so. And then obviously bringing in Lee Stacey, like I think Lee will add experience and he'll give good competition to Collie. Um, so he's he's good competition and he does have a lot of experiences, a lot of games behind him. So, um, and he is a decent keeper, like do you know what I mean? There's no doubt in that. Like he is a he is a good shot stopper and that. So, um, look, and then the rest of them obviously Lewis and James Clark is a loss, um. Look, it's, it's, it was obviously disappointing to lose him, but I think the club made the right decision there, um, to be honest. And then obviously Darren Neon, which I, you know, he'd done all right against Atlone when he came on and didn't see enough of him yesterday to say he only came on about 10 minutes or 15 minutes ago. Like, so, um, and then obviously Stefan, um, Stephen, um, he basically played with the 19s the other day. Um, so he's still eligible to play with the 19. So, um, you know, he's good to add a bit of depth as well. You know what I mean? And the club have been impressed with what they've seen from him in training and that. So, um, we'll look, give him a chance and that. So, uh, yeah, look, um, I don't know. what's a tough one to say, really, if we've improved. I wouldn't say we've improved, but I wouldn't have really said we've been, we've fallen apart. Like, we, I think we're still yeah. in, a, in a, I think we're in a good position. I think the squad are all pulling for each other. And, uh, you know, where we are on the table, you can't really ask for a lot more. So, um, I'm very happy with where we are and that, and uh, with the squad we have, you know. JP, how do you see it? Obviously, we're rolling along like they were on loan for half a season, basically, and they went back. You know what I mean? So that's always awkward to judge in that sense. But how do you see their business overall, ins and outs? I don't think Drogheda has had too bad of a one, though. Um, I don't think they they've got any weaker. To be honest with you, um, like look, t- touched on there, Sam Long, like he he's really good. Been a really good keeper for them in the, the time that he was there, and 
the ty- the the league game that we played in United Park uh, finished one all, and if it wasn't for him, Derry could have could have run away with that night. And I'm, I'm sure there's probably other other games that <coughs> Luke was able to point out where Drogheda maybe won or got a point out of, and and he was probably crucial to that. And like that that's the thing when you bring players in and half season loans, especially at the start mm. of the season, there's always the the potential they lose them in the middle point of the season. And um, I'm not a huge fan it, to be honest, but I understand especially. What you're yeah, especially if they're a quality player and they're, they're providing, like we saw it last year with ourselves with Patchen, Dundalk took them back at the, at the halfway point um, at the first chance that they could. And um, I'm sure Lincoln have, are probably grateful to Drogheda for, for giving the two guys a, the, the platform to go and show what they can do. And I'm, I'm not sure what the situation is with, with them this year. But, uh, in terms of, of Lincoln, whether they're going to be in the squad or are they going to be sent by well, Long, Long has uh, actually gone Long's and Long Boston, Boston, Boston City. Or Boston City. Boston, sorry. Well, I think it's Boston United. I think it's Boston United. Whichever. Yeah. Boston, anyway, it's yeah. worth knowing, it is worth knowing how like Boston is in Lincolnshire. Hmm. So yeah. th- I think he, he's yeah. he's there. In, so say something happens to the keeper at Lincoln that he can just be straight into the squad then. You know what I mean? Might be a recall think, option, yeah. I think they've got well, clauses, different clauses that you can play in different games for Lincoln as well. So obviously Boston yeah. would have sort of yeah. came together with Lincoln to sort out. So look, I, I can yeah. see why that one happened in the end. I was obviously when I first seen it, I was like, "There's no way these are better than us." You know what I mean? Um, yeah. but look, I, I, it's, I think it's worth noting as well. Sorry to interrupt you, but I think no, it is. Fine. I think it's worth noting as well that nobody was expecting. Like I wasn't expecting Jada to have a mad window. You know what I mean, no, and no. you know what I mean, and and, and that's worth knowing as well. I wouldn't have said, I wouldn't say we've, you know, we're we're weaker, and um, we're obviously definitely not stronger, but we're we're just perfect. You know, what I mean? not perfect, but we're just where we want to be. You know, that type of way. So I think that's worth knowing as well. You know what I mean? It, it's it, the squad is all there, and and you know you've got still got great options and that. Like you're looking at the bench yesterday, Ryan Brennan still you still not can't get into the team and that, and you know, and and that's not that's not again that's not against him. That's just you know the lads are that be in front of him are just doing really well. Like so. You know, still having him coming off the bench that is is, is, is top class, like you know. What rating are you going to I give think, them at ten, JP? I think the just to touch on that point that Luke made. I think the main point is that they didn't lose any of their their massive key players, the likes mm. of Lions and Foley and players like that. That they managed to keep that sort of strength strength there, and the players that they were losing were were really like lone players or whatever. So, um, I'm going to give Drogheda a seven because I think they. They haven't got weaker. They they haven't strengthened them. Got weaker, but they they've managed to hang on. They they're, they're massive players. If uh, if you get me, so I'm going to give them a seven. Luke, I'll give them a six. Yeah, fair enough. I do think Clark has lost to them, to be honest with you. But they had no choice. It's one of them. Uh, moving on to Dundalk, players in Lewis McCary extended loan. I think it was crucial to actually extend that loan because we're just talking about how players go back, you know what I mean, after their initial loan stints. Runer Hajj on loan from Hibs. Robbie McCourt signed for a fee as well from Sligo, as was Alfie Lewis signed for a fee from Plymouth. Out, Stan Williams end the loan, Swansea. Mark Connolly, obviously the big one, uh, end the loan and obviously on to Derry. And Mark Han Rashi. Now, obviously, we know Connolly is a big loss. We won't talk too much about him. We will a little bit, obviously, but uh, I think their aims are quite decent, JP. Yeah. Um, Robbie McCourt. Decent player, um, Sligo, um, can play centre back, can play left back. We, we saw him before that, I think, at Waterford too, didn't we? Like, that, that's how he's moved to Sligo, materialised. mccarry mm. has been been excellent for them. Um, I think he was signed initially to be left back, but I think he's he, he's played as a as a right back for most of the season. And um, look, <clears throat> Runar Hodge from Hubs could be anything really. Um, we saw. Stephen Bradley coming in from Hibs in the, the first part of the season um, and maybe comes on a good recommendation from him. So um, I think they've had a really good end for for them. Um, and obviously the key one we know is, is Mark Connolly, but there's literally nothing they could do about that, to be honest. Um, but I think Dundalk have had a, they, they've had a good one though. So do I think, I think they've, they've done well. Yeah, what do you think about their aims, Luke? I think McCarry, you know, goes on the radar because it's an extended loan, but I think that was key yeah. for them. Actually. Yeah, he's been very good for them. Um, very good for him. Very impressed with him. You know, even he like that night against Jack Brove, I think it probably was probably his best game for Dundalk. Um, you know, he put a great ball in for Robbie Benson as well. You know what I mean for that goal. And look, he's a good player. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? 
and uh, look, it, it, it's obviously not ideal losing Mark Conley and you know, and, and they've got to adapt to that now. And, and I'd be interested to see what way defensively they'll be without him, um, because I think we we did have their questions about Dundalk defensively at the start of the season, if you remember. Um, but look, you know what I mean. I think this is going to be interesting now the next few weeks for them see where they are and that you know, and especially this weekend against against Derry, like and and, and that attack that Derry have, and, and what sort of way will them losing Mark Conley? What way is this going to affect them? It's going to be very important. To him. But look, obviously bringing in Robbie McCourt, I quite like him, and uh, obviously obviously Alfie Lewis, like he's he's a good player. I would player, say like. he's an upgrade over Dan Williams, who left, who went back to Swansea. I think lose an upgrade in terms of knowing the league as well. Yeah, exactly, and exactly like and, and to be honest, Dundalk getting him permanently as well. Yeah, um, Alfie Lewis is huge because over the year he's gonna just continue to get better. Like he hasn't really he, he didn't do well with Plymouth. Obviously, you know he didn't really get an awful lot of games there. Um, and look, you know what I mean, and that's not nothing to him. You know what I mean? You're going when you go when you go there when he did in January. It can be quite tough to you know get into like a league an English team aside because if they're already in the middle of their season and you know not they're not gonna really change around their players unless they really have to um, especially if teams are doing well and Plymouth were doing well up to that point um, you know they were pushing for playoffs and all that so um, look it's a, it's a tough one um, but I think it's going to be I think he'll, he's going to prove to be a really good player for them um, and then obviously losing Conley is just is a big loss but look we'll see how they adapt to that but it's it's a fine window for them it, it's not not unspectacular but it's it's they had, they've done what they kind of had to do and, and uh, there's probably the Conley thing they could do nothing about Who's the best signing in, do you think, JP? Um, probably Alfie Lewis. Um, provides him that extra bit of, bit of quality in, in midfield. We, we saw what he could do with Pats last year. Right? So, um, and Robbie McCourt, I know he's I know he's a good player now, but he sometimes comes with, with injury prone as well. So, it does, yeah. Um, I'm going to say Alfie Lewis for their, their best signing in. Um, yeah. McCarry, I'm not, I, I, will, I will probably say him, but he, he's already been there. Like, it, it was, um, but for, I'll go, I'll say Alfie Lewis. And what rating will you give them out of 10, JP? I'm going to say seven. That's not bad considering, Luke. Um, I'll give them an eight. And do you think Alfie Lewis the best sign in as well? Would you say? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like I think he's he's gonna be proved to anyone. And the whole thing of the permanent thing, I think, is probably why I'd say Alfie Lewis. You know, I think point, it, yeah. it, it, it's you know because he's gonna be there, and and there's not it's not the worry of oh, can we hold on to him like Pat's had. You know what I mean? And um, mm. it's the whole thing of you know he's there and he's under contract with Pat with Dundalk. I mean, sorry. Um. So look, he's gonna he's gonna prove to be a good one. He's he's that sort of player. He can he can break the line with, with passes and that, you know what I mean? And he can get in behind teams with passes. So, um, yeah, he's going to be, a, he's going to prove to be a good player. So on to Finn Harps, I think this is a really tricky one. Uh, the ends, obviously, they've got Dylan Duncan, QPR, they've Harry Nicholson, Inverness, Robert Jones come in, has scored, uh, and Liam again. I think they're both from Sydney FC. Gary Boylan has come in along from Galway and James McKeown has come in, goalkeeper, who didn't start off very well. The outs, they haven't really lost anyone, in my opinion, either, though. Yo-Yo Maddie's gone. Bastion here's gone to Galway. Jared Doherty, Jesse Davers, and Errol Alkin have gone. So it's a bit weird with Finn Harps, JP, because I'm looking at them going, the players have gone are no loss. Uh, have they improved? I don't really know, because I don't really know enough about their player. I know Gary Boylan and that, but, you know, how do you see their ends? <laughs> I don't... It feels like it's so-so a little bit, doesn't it's it? It's just basically... They needed players, and they they've signed who was available. That that's to me that's that's what it looks yeah. like. Um, how they managed to get the, the two guys from Sydney, I'm, I'm not particularly sure. Um, Jones started off well, scored against yeah. Derry, um, scored a good goal. So there's a potential there. We can see the potential there. Um, he couldn't be worse than what Maddie provided, though. To be honest, no. We, I think he, by from what I saw, again, there was not much to go on in the Derry game because although he scored a corner, it was about yeah probably the only thing Van Harp's done in the whole game. You know the sec, you know what the second half was like, where they just camped inside their own box and yeah. he was literally on his own. So 
he looks like a, he looks a good signing, but it's whether Van Harps can get the players around him. They 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 make him a good signing. Um, is it Duncan? Never heard of him. Nicholson. The only one I've heard of was Gary Boylan. That from coming from Galway, and it, it looks like it's a, a it looks like it's been a swap for Bastian Heary. And um, like I think Gary Boylan wouldn't really get in for Galway, like you know what I'm saying. So yeah, and I think it was just literally. Uh, Swap five out and bring five in, basically for Van Hurst. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't think they, um, I don't think they strengthened, um, and they probably they probably not got weaker, but it, it's not even got weaker. I don't know, but, uh, like it's like, just yeah. Like, like, how do you feel? It, it, it's difficult to call. Like, I'll name them out again: Dylan Duncan, Harry Nicholson. Like, they'll go over your your head, really. Liam again. Uh, Robert Jones obviously has scored. Uh, James McCallum's coming in, Gary Boylan, but um, very difficult to judge, isn't it? Um, it's hard to see any of them maybe being important players that are going to get them out of the trenches. Like I don't know, it's a difficult one. Yeah, it's, it is a difficult one. You're right there. Like it's 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 like well, I I I find this hard to even analyze to be honest because it's it's like I don't know any of the players that Ryan. You know what I mean? Obviously, I know the name. Like, I know Gary Boylan and that he wasn't getting in a call or whatever. Like, but, and then obviously, like, they've lost it. They have lost a few players. Like, obviously, like, they've probably not, they've probably not, like, I don't think they want those players. Exactly. I don't think they want those players. Yeah. I don't think they're they're too mad about that, but they probably felt like they were in a position they kind of had to do it. Um, Like, Yo Yo Maddie was just giving them nothing. Um, he just didn't look. He just didn't even really look interested up there. You know what I mean? And look, you have to say he probably, probably was traveling. Probably traveling a fair distance. I think that's worth noting as well. You know what I mean? It's 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 yeah. it could be tough. I mean, you know what I mean? I, I think he's I think he's from Dublin. Like, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, well, I know Bastian here. He was definitely uh, traveling from Dublin. That's a fact. Anyway, I know that. So. He's not traveling any. He's just traveling now. He now he's traveling across the Galway. I'd say they've sorted him out though down there. To be honest with you, full time and all that. You know what I mean? There's, they've definitely sorted him out down there. You think, anyways? Um. But look, it's 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 too tough to analyze. I just I don't know. Like to be honest with you, it's just like I don't really know. I think they give them a rating. I'll give them a rating. I'll give them a five. JP four. Everything's straight. I, I mean, even key signing or best signing, like you'd probably say Gary Boylan because he kind of yeah, yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, because you know what I mean. Yeah. Look, moving on, really. Shamrock Rovers players in Simon Power and uh, Dan Cleary. Um, out, Danny Manju, obviously, uh, Darren McGuinness, Barry Connor, St. Pat's and Lone. Uh, with Rovers, it's a bit like, uh, in a way, with Drotta, they're in a different position in the league, but they didn't really actually have to do much, really. Um, obviously, Manju's a big loss. Some Rovers fans would consider Connor a loss, but he hasn't been getting games from them. They're the fact. Power. Um, looks like a speed merchant. Is he any good? Don't know. And obviously, you've got Dan Cleary, who is a good sign. Pico Lopez is going to be out for a while. So, how do you see them overall, JP? Rovers are Rovers, like, aren't they? they they've they got um, two sets of 11. Well, I wouldn't say two sets of 11, but we've seen all season that, that, that they can they can make changes in, in the starting 11 and, and not be any weaker. And um, yeah. I think loss of Mandry is. is a big one, like um, but we we know we had that clause in his, his contract that that meant that that he had he that he had that Rovers literally couldn't do anything about that. Um, they've brought Simon Power back from Harrogate. He was, um, I think he was in the, the league with Cabin Thiele before he went across to England. Um, so I think it was, yeah, I think you're right there, yeah. So um, it, it's an interesting signing. Um, it'll probably take a wee bit of time to to bet him into that team. Um. But the, the big one, Dan Cleary, whether he was signed off the back of Pico Lopez's injury, we don't know. If Barry Cotter hadn't already been sent out to Pats, would Rovers have gone for Dan Cleary? That, that, that's another thing. But um, mm. I think the fact that they were in for him before he went to St. Johnston and then he became available um, just made it a no-brainer for, for Rovers to, to go and do that because they probably would have had one eye on Derry and Dundalk, maybe. And what they were doing, mm. and because as we know, like it was I know we probably believe that the, the league's over. Um, but Rovers or Stephen Bradley be be looking. They they have that bit of 
keep that edge that he has on, on the two teams behind him and getting Dan Cleary in is massive, especially if he is going to be without Lopez for the rest of the season. Um, let's say Barry Cotter wasn't getting games and Danny Mandry, nothing he could do about. Yeah, I mean, Luke, Roberts, you think Roberts fans would feel like maybe they could have one or two more additions though, to the squad? Yeah, probably. Like, it's, 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 you look at the they have obviously lost Mandrew, you know. Yeah. I don't know what the story. I look, I don't know. Jack Burns' fitness isn't great, is it really? Like, he, no, it's not. He seems, muscle injury. He seems to be really struggling. Injury, I believe. Yeah. Um, he's really struggled with injuries this season. Um, so, look, I, I think they probably could have done well in a few more. I was surprised mm. that they they let Harry, Barry Cotter go on loan to Pats. Mm. I was very surprised by that one because I do feel like, like obviously, their fullbacks are still quite strong, but I think Barry Cotter is a decent player. Like, And I think he, he is quite strong for them he was quite strong for them when he was playing and, and you know I've only really seen him play one or two really bad games one or two bad games for Rovers so I was surprised by that one um, but you can mm. still understand his decision and that you know what I mean behind it but um, that one did kind of surprise me but um, now uh, you think about it look they've obviously added Dan Cleary and I think he is a good player like he, he was good mm. with Dundalk like so um, obviously it, he had a bit of a half a season with in over in Scotland um, done quite well with St Johnston. Um, and um, now he's he's back in the league because he obviously he was mentioned it was, you know, you want to yeah. be close to the family or family issues, and, and and that's obviously you know his own um personal opinion or, or decision. Yeah, I mean, to make the yeah, choice to make. So um, look, he, he he's back now. He's with a good team. Probably gonna mm-hmm. go on and win the league now with them as well. So. Um, and he's got probably he's probably going to get a lot of games now because of uh, Pico being injured. So look, uh, it's a, it's an interesting window. Probably could have done with one or two more in, but again, at the mm-hmm. end of the day, it's Shamrock Rovers. So uh, you never really know with them, do you? How would you give them a rate now? Ten, JP. Then. Um. Six. Luke. Yeah, six as well. And I suppose you have to say there. That signs Dan Cleary really because we don't really know much about power that much really like you know so Cleary we know all about so uh, yeah. that's Shamrock Rovers guys Shelburne are next and uh, three signings there obviously Maddie Smith is clearly the big one alone from Derry would have surprised a lot of people Josh Gagari from Norwich who seems to be a wide man as well and Scott van der Slew I think from Bangor City I believe probably got that wrong there you go don't know much about him not going to lie lads but uh, that's their ins they're outs Lewis Webb went back on loan to Swansea. No surprise there. Lost place. Brendan Clark, no loss. Uh, Jordan McInnes, uh back to Arsenal actually earlier as well. And uh, Colin Cox, Longford. Adam Thomas, Galway. And Stanley. Um, JP, you'd look at Shelburne and go, anyone they lost there literally aren't any losses. They definitely added yeah. Matty Smith, I think, in terms of the quality there. Maybe Josh Gagera, how, how do you, maybe as well. I don't know. It's hard to know, but I think it's quite obvious they have improved their squad, even if it's slightly. Yeah. Um, uh, like Matty Smith, big player, um, big signing for, for Shelburne. Um, the other two, they don't know much about, but it'll be interesting to, to see over as, as the weeks go on um, how good a signing they are. We know mm. Lewis Webb lost his place early on in the season. Um, that was because... Um, Shelburne weren't one of matches and basically I know, yeah. <laughs> I'm not blaming him for it but he didn't perform well in my opinion when he when he was in there and Damien Duff brought it well um, we know when these clubs send their players over that there's probably a contract and they're, uh, a clause in the contract that they have to play so many matches or whatever but at the end of the day you have to do what's right for, for the football club that, that you're the manager of not not the football club of that player's uh, contract today, and fair play to Damien Duff. Um, they brought Brendan Clark in, and it seemed they've turned Shelburne's um, season around. Jordan McInniff, mm. he's a good player, but he's again injury, he's prone. injury prone. Um, he'd been out for quite a few years at Arsenal, um, and then he came to Shelburne. Um, don't think he set the world alight, but did he get enough games? Were they trying to manage his injuries? Um, so I think Shelburne definitely came out of the window stronger than the the what they went went and did. And not only that, the the players that they have available to them before that are, are starting to improve as the season goes on. So, um, 
I think the Shelburne fans are in for a good second half of the season. I think in terms of signings, Luke, yeah, I think uh, Matty Smith is the obvious one here, really, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Like he's, he's. He, I was very surprised by this one when I saying when I heard yeah. the rumor. First of all, I was like, no way. Like, I was like, I, I was surprised to even even hear he was leaving Derry. Like, I had no indications that he was going to be leaving Derry. Like, you know that type of way. Um, which came as a surprise. But then the evens, I think it was more of a shock who he resigned for than Enton. Um, and look, you know what I mean. It, it, it's, you know, you can nearly give that down to Damien Duff to be honest. The sort of effect he has, you know, and. and Players want to play for him and that. So, um, yeah, look, it's a good sign for Shells. Surprised by it, but he's going to be a big player for them regardless and, and that, you know, and he, he's a quality player. Like, so, surprised he didn't go back to bats, to be honest with you, Keith. Um, definitely more surprised he didn't go to back, back to bats. But, look, good signing anyways. And, um, you know, it, it probably a great window for them because they've definitely strengthened rather than they've gotten weaker, which is, which is always good for a team like Shelburne, you know? Yeah, JP, what are you giving them right now, Ken? I'll give them an eight. It's because I think they've definitely got stronger. Yeah, I think they've got rid of players they didn't need. Uh, Luke? Yeah, I'd probably give them an eight as well. Like, it's, it's you know, it's a good window for them. Yeah, I'll just slightly go next. These are a bit difficult as well, I have to say. Frank Livop has come in, although an Estonian international, to be fair. Fabrice Hartmann has come in and loaned from Leipzig, which is an interesting one. And Robbie Burton, who's Welsh, and loaned from Dynamo Zagreb. Um, yeah, you'd wonder... Uh, how they kind of get these players or how they come to the conclusion to get these players. I mean, Zagreb, Leipzig, you know, and Talon. Anyway, Elf, Darren Collins, Ed McGinty is the big one and even Robbie McCourt. Luke, I'll we'll start with you this time. A yeah. slight of strength in the window, do you think? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, I don't. I don't because I feel like losing Ed is just, it is just, you can't replace him like and, and mm. look let's be honest here your man McNichol has done McNich- McNichols has done really well I absolutely butchered his name there and done really well but he obviously wasn't great against Wexford um, and, and had a poor gave away a poor goal like but um, look it's tough to replace Ed and look he done well up to up to the Wexford game so I'll you know give, obviously give them the benefit of the doubt there but no I don't think they've strengthened to be honest with you um, I think Ed was Arguably one of their best players, and that's so. Uh, look, they've not lost. Obviously, with Ed, they've lost Ed, but after that, they've not really lost anyone. Mm. Um, but I wouldn't have really said they've strengthened. You know, I think JP, the player with the biggest reputation is Frank Livock, who's come in from Talon. But I've noticed in recent years, for some reason, Eastern European internationals generally don't seem to settle very well in the League of Ireland. I don't know if that's the thing you've seen, but I don't know. What do you think? I have hold a similar. Uh, opinion to that. Um, what were they thinking? Say he won't. But yeah. Well, well, it's a case of that they're coming over and they're thinking that the the, the league is a is a dawdle compared to what they used to like. But yeah. um, the the one that stood out for me was Fabrice Hartman because he he'd been on the bench for a couple of times for for Leipzig last year, like so. Um, in the the Bundesliga, so that that's a. That, I'd that's love to know how they. I'd love to know how the process of getting him in was though. Be interesting yeah, to know. exactly. <laughs> so, the, the, I, I don't think we can say they've improved because we don't know much about the three players that they've signed. Mm. It could turn out that they have improved, um, mm. and that these players could turn out to be very valuable assets for them. Yeah. Um, but it's a hard one to call, to be honest. Um, obviously the key one is losing Ed McGinty straight after the European game. Um. And Mick Nicholas, who was on loan at Cliftonville last year, where mm. he finished second in the league and they, they won the the league cup, so he, he had a decent they had a decent season with, yeah. with him in, in net. So, but he didn't have a, a good start. He didn't have a good game. Well, against Wexford, you can't don't think you can judge him on one mistake because players will mm. make mistakes. It's it's about how they react to their mistakes, and um, it'll be an interesting one. The Robbie McCourt one we touched on it with, with Dundalk, he's another player who tends to, to pick up an injury and be out for a period of time. So 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 that I know Sligo fans were disappointed to lose him, but um I'm not I'm not sure that it it it'd be a massive loss to them, to be honest. Mm. Well you're gonna give them out of ten, JP. Um I'll say five. Luke. Uh four. Ooh, four. 
that's the weakest so far, is it? Maybe Finn Hart, I'm not sure, but maybe combined. Oh, Finn Hart, Finn Hart, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next up, St. Patrick's Athletic, and they brought in Harry Brockbank from El Paso Locomotive. I don't know how he ended up over there, but anyway, uh, he's from Bolton, by the way. Tij Timmermans uh, from P-A-E-E-K, Serge from, I'm not even going there, and Barry Potter, <laughs> and Long. You've seen it, haven't you? You see it as well, don't you, JP? You want to give it a try? No. See the Serge came from? <laughs> Out, Josh Keeley, Spurs, James the Bank, Luton Aze, uh, Dara Burns, FK Dons, Akeem Corbley, and Long to uh, Longford Town. JP, have you seen Pat? Oh, um, game, hard one to call. The Barry mm-hmm. Potter one was a, a surprising one when I saw it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but a, but a good one for for Pats. Um, we saw last year when they came into the league from Ipswich from the Shamrock Rovers. He, he settled well and um finished the season well for Emmons. And unfortunately, he just hasn't been able to get game time this season for for one reason or another. But I'm sure he'll get plenty that game time with Pats, and and that can only be a good thing for Pats and. And Barry Cotter. So, um, the other, the Harry Brockbank one, I think, must be coming on a recommendation from Owen Doyle because he, he was a potent willard. They were potent together. I don't know. And 100%. The other yeah. Two, the, the other two, um, never heard of them. Um, I'll be relying on the Pat Funds. Pat fans, they, they give me their, their take on them too over the I know that Ser- Serge, uh, John Daly, the, uh, obviously the, the head coach of Pat's uh, system, to be like, uh, recommended him because he was in Finland and Serge has come from Finland basically. Timmermans, no idea uh, who came up with him as such, but uh, he's coming. He's a Dutch player, but you might have guessed there. But uh, yeah, look, it's a difficult one. I suppose the outs are a big thing for Pat's JP when you look yeah. at them. Uh, they've obviously yeah. made a bit of money on, on, on good players and that, but. Yeah, that that's that's one thing about Pat's that they've done good days. Like Josh mm-hmm. Keeney's away to the Cottenham. I think well we knew from the end of last season that he was going for a down payment of half a million euros with good business. And then Dara Burns, I think they lost for buttons to MK Dons, but again that probably mm-hmm. um a clause in the, the contract similar to what Danny Mandry had it um at Shama Grovers, but I think Burns probably has gone for a wee bit more than the what Mandry yeah. went for. No, he has, um, yeah. The Maz of Ross. Um Keely, I think, was an under he was under nineteen keeper, wasn't he? Really? He wasn't uh, played one match for the senior team, yeah. One match. Yeah. So not really a huge loss, but could be very valuable in future in terms of bringing in um, and yeah. uh, money. Um uh, Abankwa is likewise. Um I don't think we saw the best of James Abankwa this season, um, compared to what we, we saw saw last season, but He's obviously probably had the, the move to Indonesia in the back of his mind. So, um, for Pat, I think apart from losing Dara Burns, I, I don't think they've lost too much, to be honest with you, because I think they've replaced the bank well with probably a better player than Barry Cotter. Yeah, yeah, at this minute, at any anyway, time. Yeah, Luke, how do you see them overall there? Um, yeah, I wouldn't really say they've strengthened, but I would say they've more. Yeah. They wouldn't have really. Obviously, they've lost Ara, and you know, we know the last Ara is. But at the same time, you know, they've they've not really lost anyone else. Like, I don't think a bank was a big loss, to be honest. No, it wasn't um, playing anyway. So for me, no, the players have to be playing to be lost. This would be getting. And you're you're getting good money out of it as well. So yeah. like, there was no real complaint behind you know, that one. I don't think. Um, and then I think Josh Keeley was another one that isn't probably a loss because he wasn't really playing, um, at all. So. Um, like third choice keeper, like so, you know, I mean, it, it's not as if it was a big loss. So, um, yeah, that was probably the only loss. Um, and I say, you know, obviously bringing in Barry Carter is a good sign. And so, I wouldn't have really said they've strengthened her, but I wouldn't have said they've. I think they're just in in the middle. I think they're just happy enough for what they have, and that. So, um, yeah, mm-hmm. I wouldn't really. I wouldn't think they've uh, strengthened much, anyways. But they're all right. I would say you see their best signing uh, by a mile is Barry Carter, but the only issue yeah. is he's on loan, so it's unlikely signed at the end of the season. So it's an interesting one that way. Uh, you know, the other players, yeah, we'll have to see. But uh, what rating would you give them, JP, do you think? It's a difficult one, I think, with them as well. It, it is difficult. Um, but I think that the players... I must, I must mention, Jack, Jack Scott actually went back as well to Wolves, but he's not in the list. <laughs> so I better get yeah, that one out there. Your favourite player. Um, I don't think they've replaced their... They've replaced 
Barry, uh, as I said, they've replaced the bank well for a better player, but I, I don't think they've replaced Dara Burns with a like for no. like. So, no. Because, because of that, enough. because of that, I'm going to give him a six. If they'd brought some, then they replaced Dara Burns. Mm. Probably would have upped it to maybe a seven, eight, but I'm going to say six. Yeah, I think Serge is a replacement, but um, Luke, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just say seven. Um, you know, like I'd say, past fans be happy enough with that ranking, but I don't. Yeah, it's it's just a seven. It's it's not not major. Mm. Now with UCD, just going quickly on to them. There's nothing really you can say about UCD because obviously they don't bring players in, but obviously they lost on fire. Liam Kerrigan, Adam Lennon, Eric Yoyo, uh, Adam Verdon. Um, I nearly said uh, Colin Whelan because he, he feels like he's gone. You know that kind of way. He probably never played for again. Actually, to be honest with you, but um, look, you, you can't give them a rate or anything like that. But you know, they just every season they lose these players, really good players, halfway through the season. It's just a bit of a killer, JP. But what can you do, really? That's just the the just the way the makeup yeah. that, that they have, and it's like the one thing. Like I know a lot of people say UCD bring nothing to the league, but they they bring. What they don't bring, they make up for them. What they do bring and what they do is they, they give the players like Liam Kerrigan and Eric Euro and Colin yeah. Whelan and in the past, Georgie Kelly, Robbie Benson, Greg Sloggett. There's a long list that we could go through. They give them a chance. They continue playing senior football at a semi-professional level while studying. And without UCD, we probably would have lost a long list of talented players that have come, come through the league, gone on to play European f- football with other teams in the league, moved to England, played international level, and without UCD, we may have lost all them players. So, um, look, obviously the big one was losing Liam Kerrigan, um, but who, who can deny a young player mm. a move? They, they hit Lee and I saw the day that, <laughs> I know there's been rumours in the, the last few weeks that they were going to be signing Cesc Fabregas, but that, that has um, now become reality where last month he was playing alongside I don't want to be disrespectful, but Dylan Duffy next, mm. next tomorrow is going to be playing alongside Sex Fabregas. Like, so, or Dylan Duffy watching this, <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect, no disrespect, but I'm no, sure no, you'll like, understand. Like, 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 to be playing for UCD and then suddenly Fabregas rocks up, like you know, exactly. Talking, yeah, it's, not, it's not even it's not even Fabregas player, but the things he can learn as a midfield player, pretty yeah. much what Terry is off the dressing rooms, he's been in as well. Yeah, it's crazy, managers and all. Like, yeah, 100%. Yeah. No, you agree like, with him. Like, it's a fantastic opportunity for him to learn in that aspect as well. But, guys, I think we'll leave it there because we've done a lot there. And, uh, yeah. you know, it'll be interesting to see what people think in the comments, uh, how they rate their team's transfer windows, who maybe tell us who their key signing was and things like that yeah. and who's been losses and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, we'll leave it there. Thanks for coming on, guys. Subscribe, guys, at home. Hit your bell notification button. And once again, thanks for watching. Brilliant stuff. Cheers, that's Cheers. It.